What's up everyone? Welcome to yet another episode on Kobe MC Photography's YouTube channel. I'm Kobe Mercury Clark, been a photographer for a long time. I know a lot of you are returning uh, viewers. Thank you all for subscribing, very much appreciated. However, there are some new subscribers coming to the channel, so I felt it'd be a good idea to introduce myself. I've been shooting Pentax for, oh man, since back in the film days. And, uh, you know, I've deep dived, if you look at my other videos, I've done some deep diving in regards to how the whole system works, all the various settings, what the best settings are to use for certain situations and things like that. So I decided to do something a little different because I haven't really seen many people. Actually, I don't think I've really seen anyone like dive, dive, dive into shooting video on a Pentax camera. Now for this, I am using the K3 Mark III. I have the uh, HD DA55300 PLM lens on the camera. I'm here at my local creek uh, by my house and I'm just gonna take some footage of some nature, uh, you know, and uh, just change some of the settings and whatnot. Uh, right now I'm shooting in full HD 1080p at uh, 60 frames a second, uh, which is, Ideally, it's my favorite in regards to, uh, you know, a good combination of image quality or video quality, as well as, uh, you know, smaller file size for uploading and things like that. Uh, I will be switching over to, to 4K. Now, the one thing is with the K3 Mark III, the 4K is at a 1.3 time crop. So it would be the same as you using the 1.3 time crop when you're taking your still photos. Ideally, yes, we would wish that it was the full actual frame, but unfortunately that's not how it is. Uh, yeah, so most of this footage will probably be 1080p at 60 frames a second, uh, cause I, I am planning on doing some slow-mo stuff. So pretty much everything you see in this video today is 100% gonna be recorded using the K3 Mark III. And that's it. So uh, let's just start shooting some uh, nature. <laughs> This is seriously the land of ferns. Check this out. Yeah. 
Yeah, so some lady just uh, told me about this fungi that's growing on these on this fallen tree here. I was like, actually, that's pretty cool. Like, look at that. And she asked if I was taking pictures. I was like, nope, taking video. She's like, oh, that's different. And the AF is not picking up you. So I'm going to touch the back screen. There we go. Okay. And that, my friends, is a kingbird. Just hanging out. I don't want to get any closer because, uh, well, you know, <laughs> I don't think that'll work out so well. I'm definitely going to have to come back here and actually grab some shots of, uh, of these birds. Definitely. Let's try something here. Oh yeah. See how fast the autofocus switched over? It's actually not bad and that's at full 300. That red winged blackbird's still over there. That guy over here is gone now. Yeah, gone, gone. Red winged blackbird's still up there though. All right, I'll just uh, grab a couple more things and uh, I guess then we'll head on to the discussion or opinions. Conclusion, yeah, that's it, conclusion. That's what I'm looking for. Oh, on the other side? Okay. Okay, thank you. So right now I'm in 4K compared to 1080. 1080 does have better image stabilization though than the 4K. 
No different than shooting with a wider angle lens, you'll get better stabilization. Uh, you know, because it's not going to be telephoto where it exaggerates every single slight movement. Overall, I basically chalk it up to this. Video in video using a Pentax with PLM capability, uh, so KAF4 lens mount, um, it's actually not that bad. Uh, the only caveat is when it comes to the autofocus, you really need to think methodically about your movements. Because uh, if you move too quick, then yes, the focus will eventually lose itself and that'll be it. But as you can see here, if you're methodical about your movements and you're more cinematic with how you're doing things, the autofocus actually isn't that bad. Right? It's really, it's not that bad. Um, yeah, so, I mean, that, that's unless you have a K70, which uh, actually does continuous autofocus using DC lenses as well, which I am kind of thinking, eh, should I, should I not, should I, should I not? But seeing as it's a lower end camera, I don't think that would be the best solution uh, for myself, especially for video. So at that point, I think what I would actually do and, you know, you're going to freak out when you hear this, but, you know, it is in regards to shooting video. I just grab something like the uh, Sony ZV-1. Uh, you know, I thought about the ZV, I think it's the E10, uh, which is the newer version of that camera. But the only thing with that one is, again, it's an interchangeable lens camera, but I'm trying to find a solution that's just simple, convenient, just grab it and go with decent quality. And I think for that, uh, the Sony ZV-1 would actually be the best thing uh, to get in regards to shooting specifically video. Uh, you know, it's a small compact vlogging style camera. Um, but I don't know, you know. As, uh, as I was thinking about it, you know, I started thinking, well, what about just using video on my Pentax more than I have been, right? So that's uh, what I'm gonna be doing now. Uh, most of my videos going forward, I'm gonna try not to use my phone unless I absolutely have to, if I need multiple angles and things like that. But generally speaking, I will be using the uh, K3 Mark III or maybe even my K3, uh, you know, just for shooting video footage directly from a Pentax camera which I think would actually be more value added uh, thing for the channel as well in regards to it being focused on the Pentax brand. So yeah, that's uh, pretty much all my thoughts on uh, this whole video thing. Oh, no, 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 I'm just doing video. You too.
morning. Okay, so what did we learn today? I don't know, that's a very good question. Uh, I guess on uh, the surface of it all, yes, Pentax video, at least on the K3 Mark III, is completely usable footage that you can enjoy. Uh, you can enjoy shooting, viewing, uh, you know, image quality is pretty good. And, uh, you know, there's, I would say, I guess, you know, it's average, um, but with some post-video editing skill, you can make very good footage out of that. Uh, you know, other than that, I always feel like I have mosquitoes on me. Uh, apart from that, the AFC, yes, it is lethargic. Uh, there's no way you're going to be doing birds in flight or any kind of uh, extremely fast action shooting in video relying on the autofocus alone it's just not realistically feasible at all. Um, you know, I know Panasonic does contrast detect autofocus, but I'm pretty sure theirs is a lot faster than Pentax's contrast detect autofocus. Um, and, uh, let's see, what else, what else, what else, what else? Come on, man, think, 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 think. Uh, the other thing, at least for myself, I, I just cannot pan in live view you know, birds that, you know, are, or anything that's moving erratically. I just can't do that. Um, I'm sure there's other people who perfectly can, um, you know, so I guess that that'll be a topic for a never day because I'm never going to get into that. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so you've seen the footage yourself. I explained everything as, uh, you know, I showed the footage and whatnot. And it, the only thing, the, the last section with uh, the ducks, that was interesting. Uh, there's a little gray square that shows up on uh, the camera to show you where it picked the focus from when you're using, I was using the zone focus for video. Uh, so it does provide a little gray square, which again is hard to see when you're shooting things that are kind of dark. I don't know what's going on with that. There's no excuse since it's an actual L, it's an actual illuminated screen so it should be able to have different colors and whatnot which would be easier to see what you're focusing on but it doesn't have that so there we are uh, but I had to keep hitting the back of the screen just to make sure that it was still focusing on the intended subject because there were some blades of uh, not grass but I don't know whatever it was uh, there were some blades of stuff in front of the birds uh, in front of uh, the ducks and yeah I think I did get bit by something um, anyway, yeah, so th there was some of that and, uh, you know, so just to ensure it was still focused, I had to keep hitting the back of the screen. However, it does snap into focus when you do that. So it's, you know, as long as the focus isn't so far out, as long as it's fairly close, it it's almost imperceptible. 
So uh, there you go. If you like the video, leave a like. If you haven't already, please do subscribe. Always helps me out. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. If you want to support the channel, I leave that information at the bottom of the description. And uh, I guess I'm going to go. It's time for me to start working on the next video. Catch you on the next one. I'm out.